How's it going, David from Common Folk Investments? So sometimes being a dealer isn't all that great. And there is multiple reasons to be sad about being a dealer, like bad reasons. But I got this one question, and so it started making me think. And then I've gotten this question like multiple times. So I figured I would just address this question. So I'll read the person's question <clears throat> so you can kind of get the idea of what it is. Um, so this person was like, hey there, I have a question for you guys. Do you ever get tired of seeing the same comics over and over and over? I would like, I would think that being a dealer would sort of dilute the magic of the hobby in that way. Sure, there are always certain books that come in higher grade than average, but it's still the same book. It's the same book over and over. No? So basically what he's asking as a comic book dealer, does it dilute the magic? Does it dilute that feeling of when you first get a book or you try really, really hard, save up money or do a bunch of trades or whatever it is to get a certain comic book, your, your grail, your holy grail, whatever it is that you're after, you know, um, yeah, it does. It really does. Um, I've, I've, t I've told this story before, but I was a Hulk collector. And so I was trying to get a complete run of the Incredible Hulk and uh, Tales to Astonish. So I got all things Hulk, all things Turtles. I think I had a complete run of Turtles and I had a near complete run of the Hulk. Um, and as you guys know, I worked for my dad when I was little and instead of getting money, I would get comic books. And so I tried to complete my run. I had 102 all the way up until whatever um, the newest one was in the 90s or close to the newest one. I remember getting uh, 377, was it? 377, the one where it's like a green holographic cover and uh, it's kind of like his origin type story. I spilt maple syrup on it. I bought that new. Um, so probably in the early mid 90s is when I stopped um, getting, but pretty much had the whole one, 102 all the way up. I had Tales of Astonish 58 where he battles, uh, no, 59 where he battles Giant Man and then he continues on. And then I had a couple in, I want to, I didn't have number one. I might've had number two, I'm not sure. But I think I had three, four, five, and six. Um, the ones that were the hardest ones to get was Hulk 181. And I had a, either a coverless or a low grade copy. And I worked many, like all summer, many, many days. And I finally got a Hulk 181 and a 9.6. Uh, this was when CGC was like brand new. I worked really hard. I got it. I ended up having to sell that to buy uh, a car. But I worked really, really hard to get that Hulk 181. I worked all summer in a barn. You know, it was fun. Uh, it actually was fun. I was with my best friend. We listened to music and it's like went through comic books like for 10, 12 hours a day. And just like, you know, we had to sort like hundreds of thousands of comics. So it does take away the magic. I remember working really, really hard for that. And then I had to part with it, but I still had my low grade copy. Um, and then I remember getting in a Hulk 181 when I started this business. And, and at the time we were just, uh, you know, I got it in and I was like, oh my gosh, a Hulk 181, you know, and it was decent shape, probably like a six or a seven. And then we ended up selling it. And I was like, no, oh, man, I had to ship it and go away. And then I remember like, a couple weeks later, I got two in the same week. And I was like, oh, wow. And then, then these guys kind of came in. And then uh, you've done, seen my videos where I have, I have like 30 Hulk 181s, whatever, 40, 50. I don't even remember how many I had at the time. And so it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it dilutes the magic. It dilutes um, that feeling that you really want this certain comic book. And then you get them all the time, like all the time. So the magic is definitely gone in that aspect. Um, the, you know, it's like, oops, so, oops, just kick something over. And uh, so a lot of people, like, they look at me how I handle this. Oh, it's this or this, and it's their grail. And I just, like, kind of throw it to the wayside, so to speak. Um, yeah, so it, it, being a dealer, I see that stuff all the, all the time, all the time. While other people like you maybe only see your grail comic book, like, other than on Instagram, like, in person, maybe, like, once a year, if that. You know, maybe you never get to hold one or something like that. So it does dilute it. Uh, but I, but on the positive note, I get to see a lot of cool books, a lot of cool books, even new books, old books, uh, rare books, um, books with cool covers that I would have never normally seen before. And that's that's the flip side. There's you know, there's got to take the you know, 
what is it the, the sugar and the sour you know this they're sweet and the sour so that's the kind of flip side is i get to see a lot of cool stuff i'm a consignment center so people send me books and it's like you know i could see crime suspense uh stories number 22 uh we got three of them in for this auction i love that cover it's one of my favorite covers and i get to see that all the time you know not all the time, but I get to see it pretty rare. I never saw that when I was a little kid. I didn't even know it existed. Um, so I get to see stuff like that. Um, old Golden Age Batman. All this kind of stuff that I would know. No normal person would ever get to see. Like, you guys out there probably, unless you go to a Comic Con and you see stuff on the wall. Or you see something on your Instagram or something like that. Um, but, like, actually holding it. It's like, you guys probably don't get to see the amount of books that I get to see. So that's, like, the flip side. Is, yeah give up a little bit so uh, becoming a dealer has definitely moved that side of my brain where i'm like a collector there are still things that i buy and i collect um but it's very rare um very rare um but yeah so that's to answer that person's question and the questions i've gotten before you know does it take away the magic and i'm like yeah it's a sad part of being a dealer but at the same time there's a lot of positives have a great day